Now, it's my pleasure to welcome from the University of Southern California, the director of the An uh, Annenberg Innovation Lab, the one and only Jonathan Taplin. Thanks to everybody. Uh, I was going to give a kind of fancy PowerPoint presentation, but I think I'm just going to speak from my heart here. Um, I spent most of my life making music, movies, television with people like Bob Dylan and George Harrison and Martin Scorsese. And uh, then I created the first video on demand service called The Entertainer in 1996 when broadband was just beginning. And so I understand the power of broadband and what it could be. Um, so now I run, I'm a professor at the Annenberg School of Communication, and I run the Annenberg Innovation Lab. And Innovation Lab is sponsored by companies like Warner Brothers, Disney, Fox, IBM, Cisco, Havas, Orange. And it used to be that we would have to go to Seoul, South Korea to study high-speed broadband and, and the uses of that. And now we can come to Chattanooga. And I promise you, that's a lot easier than going to Seoul, South Korea. Uh, and they speak English here, too. Uh, so we now have a partnership with EPB. And we're just beginning to think about what are the possibilities and uses of this technology. So we're doing. Well, a year and a half ago, we did just for fun, just to see if we could do it, we did a duet between T-Bone Burnett in my studio in Los Angeles and Chuck Mead on a stage in Chattanooga. And they sang together a song over 2,000 miles. That's the power of gigabit internet. Um, now we're going to take that and we're going to make the possibility for some young prodigy in Chattanooga who wants to work with a violin virtuoso in Los Angeles to do music lessons together. There's no reason they can't do that. And that's the power of distance learning. We're doing microbiology experiments with the help of the National Science Foundation using 4K microscopes. And, and doing between the STEM school here and USC's researchers. So we know the power for education. We know the power for uh, technology, media. But imagine what is coming. So some of you know about a new technology called Oculus Rift, which was just bought by Facebook. And the head of Facebook's division at Oculus Rift is on the board of the Annenberg Innovation Lab. So we're going to propose to them that we do an experiment. So one of the things Oculus Rift is playing with is games. So let's just imagine you have five kids in five different houses in Chattanooga, and maybe one of them's handicapped in a wheelchair. And they're a hockey team in the Stanley Cup Finals, and they put on their Oculus Rift goggles and the ear headphones, and all of a sudden, they're in an arena with 12,000 screaming fans, and they're skating down the ice and passing the puck back and forth between each other. That requires 250 megabits per second, symmetrical. Now, the incumbents, like Comcast, will tell you, well, maybe we could do that, but but as Harold has pointed out, they have, at maybe at their best, 100 megabits downstream and 3 megabits upstream. So if that kid tried to pass the puck, it would take about a minute for it to get to his other friend in another house, right? So that's not a solution. Um, I think we're just beginning to think of the possibilities of what this thing could do. And as the senator said, we don't know exactly what can be, but the whole cool thing about the Innovation Center and the, the kind of getting people together here and playing with these technologies is 
we'll come up with something new. I don't know if any of you know about the theory of Moore's Law, but in the 1970s, Gordon Moore at Intel said that the power of the microprocessor would double every two years for the same price. Now, he was wrong. It turned out that it would double every 18 months for the same price. But as one person pointed to me, if, if this had applied to, say, automobiles, you could buy a Ferrari for $300 that would go 1,000 miles per hour, right? So it doesn't, but it does apply to bits. And one of the things that Harold and Jim Ingram have, have really taught me is we've been thinking in the media economy about scarcity. And scarcity is, well, I'm Comcast. I only got a certain amount of bandwidth. So Netflix, if you want your stuff to go fast, you got to pay me because I'm going to slow down everybody else so you can get in the fast lane and everybody else will go a little slower. But because you paid me, you can get priority. That's scarcity. But the thing about gigabit fiber is there is no scarcity. It has the same economics as Moore's Law. As the gentleman from Oregon pointed out, the cost to do one gigabit or 250 megabits doesn't really matter. And so I don't think most people really understand this. And so what we're going to try and do is bring some of the brilliant people from Warner Brothers and Fox and Disney and IBM down here and get them to get, wrap their heads around this idea that you've got to stop worrying about scarcity. And friends of mine, like James Cameron, who make the Avatar, he wants to make movies in 8K, right? Not 4K, but 8K. And that will be about 500 megabits per second, you know? But EPB could handle that today, you know? So, um, so here's the thing. The law that the senator talked about that prevents EBP from expanding itself to help other counties that would like to have a little choice. I mean, the word competition to me is not a bad thing, you know? Quite honestly, you notice that AT&T never decided to do anything but really bad DSL until Google moved into one of their towns and started doing gigabit internet. And then they said, oh, we'll, we'll do fiber too. You know, so a little competition is good, but mostly the citizens have to have some choice. And as far as I'm concerned, that law is nothing but a monopoly protection act. And it is the worst kind of crony capitalism that exists. And for all those people who think So, you know, I've talked to the lawyers at the Gould School of Law who do a lot of communications law and we're a communications school. And our reading of the power of the FCC and the 1996 Telecommunications Act is they have the right to preempt these local laws that prevent cities from having choice. And I'm hoping that they exercise that power and do something about this because if we don't have that, we've got a bunch of monopolies that will just sit on it and not do any innovation like they haven't for the last 25 years. And we won't get to the future that is already here in Chattanooga. So thank you very much.